Hi guys, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the GoPro Max, the new 360 camera announced today by GoPro, the sequel to the GoPro Fusion, which was released a couple years ago. We're just going to talk about the specs, what has been released so far, comparing it to the GoPro Fusion and the Insta360 ONE X, which is probably going to be its main competitor. I don't have the camera now, nobody does, because it's just actually been announced. I have pre-ordered it and it's going to come on the 25th of October, so stay tuned for more, for more videos, for more actual reviews from this camera. But Today we're just going to be talking about what we can see from the release, from the release video, the website and all that kind of stuff. Okay, so let's go straight into it. The GoPro Hero Max will have a maximum video resolution of 5.6K at 30 frames per second. However, there are some other video modes which have other resolutions. For example, it can shoot 1440 video at 60 frames per second and 1080p at, again, 60 frames per second. It has a maximum bit rate of 78 megabits per second and it can shoot photos at 16.6 .6 megapixels. It's waterproof up to five meters and slightly protected against any kind of damage it may receive. It's got six microphones, can shoot ambisonic audio. It can live stream at 1080p and features several video modes, including time-lapse, time warp, slow motion, and standard 360 video. Now, just looking at the specs, there doesn't appear to be a huge leap in terms of capability. If we just look at the video and photo resolution, 5.6K and 16.6 .6 megapixels isn't completely different from any other camera we've seen before. The previous Fusion had slightly lower video resolution, so there is a slight improvement. However, there are other cameras out right now that can shoot 5.7K, so 5.6 is slightly lower. However, I will stress that resolution really is not everything. I think, well, personally, I think what matters much more is the quality of the lenses, quality of the sensors and GoPro usually are a step above the rest in terms of that and they use a more advanced chip in the actual camera to process the video to make it look as good as possible. But if we do take a closer look you can see there are some big differences. I mean take a look at the design for instance we can see straight away that the GoPro Max features two lenses which the previous camera did, all 360 cameras do, but it also features a LCD screen which makes it much easier to use. The issue with the GoPro Fusion the last generation was that while it had excellent hardware, in fact it still really holds up today in terms of hardware, but the software was subpar and it was just difficult to use. There was no manual way of controlling it really, uh, but it was a very poor quality black and white LCD screen, didn't really do anything. You had to connect it to either a laptop of your phone or a PC desktop to actually get anything out of it, to control it, that kind of stuff. And it was just not, it was, the software was buggy. It was hard to use. It's generally a hard to use camera, but it seems to me that the GoPro Max has been specifically designed to be easier to use. It's smaller, more compact. It has the LCD screen, a whole new software. You can control everything just using the camera. You don't need to actually connect it to anything to use it and even use it as a vlogging camera, which brings me on to my next point because GoPro are really pushing the fact that this is a three-in-one camera. So it can obviously shoot 360 video and photos using both lenses. However, you can also just use one of those lenses to use it as a more well, similar to a GoPro Hero, just their normal standard action camera. It can be used as one of those, just using one of the lenses. You can shoot in up to 1440p, 1080p at 60 frames per second. Using one of the lenses and that screen at the front, you can use it as a vlogging camera with, uh, you know, just using it on a selfie stick or any kind of thing you want to use it on. You can use it just like you would a GoPro Hero. So I guess how they're justifying its quite high price and why it's worth getting. That's kind of one of its unique selling points. The stabilization is also something that GoPro is really pushing. They call it hyper smooth, which is their version of software stabilization that allows the camera to shoot super smooth video, regardless of how you use it. If you're attaching it to a surfboard, a bike, you're running with it, you're doing some crazy stunts, whatever, it should be able to keep your video looking super smooth without any external hardware, which is the main point. The Glass Fusion had pretty decent video stabilization uh, and the Insta360 ONE X is pretty much the, the gold standard now with their flow state stabilization. This is a similar thing. Whether it actually is competes with them, whether it's better, whether it's the same, we don't know yet because we don't have the camera. I will be making very detailed comparisons between the stabilization of those two cameras when I get it and we will see how it goes. But just looking at the videos, the it seems to work really well. Again, these are marketing videos, so take them with a big pinch of salt because the marketing videos always look amazing. They're not going to look average, are they? Again, it's nothing really brand new, but it's something that can be improved upon and hopefully the Max has the best stabilization out right now. Again, focusing on user friendliness and ease of use, the Max is going to completely re redesign, redevelop its app that's used to process videos, process photos, and 
texts, particularly reframe them. Now, reframing is the phrase used to explain the process of taking a 360 video, putting it in an app or a program, and then choosing points where you want the camera to pan, to zoom, to look in on something, to follow something, and it allows you to really manipulate your 360 video into a standard video, but it makes it very, very smooth, very, very unique, and very dynamic in terms of how cinematic it looks. So I'm hoping that that really does work as well as they say, because it is one of the main reasons people buy these cameras now. It's not so much to do with VR and 360 video in terms of looking around, because basically that's kind of dead. I mean, it's really diff on a consumer basis. I mean, for professional use, great, but consumers don't really want to do that that much. They want to use these cameras to make these kinds of videos. So yeah, hopefully that works and it makes it much easier to use. Another upgrade which the Max brings is audio, which is really quite surprising and important because a lot of 360 cameras will both virtually all 360 cameras completely ignore audio. They just pay it lip service and the audio is terrible. So you can't really use the audio that you shoot with, with the camera. You need to have external audio, which is difficult to sync. It's a pain in the ass really. GoPro are saying that the Max will have the best audio of any camera that they have. It uses six microphones to create ambisonic audio, which means it's kind of surrounding you. And uh, they say it's as good as a shotgun mic, which is quite a claim because usually internal mics are awful. If they say, if what they say is true, then that is awesome. It's gonna be a really, really good reason to buy this camera because it means you will not need to buy any external audio equipment. Pretty much gonna be like the perfect camera for vlogging if that's true. Now there are some other cool video modes that uh, GoPro have brought in. For example, time-lapse, time warp, this, this kind of hyperlapse feature which can only really be shot with a 360 camera. It looks really, really cool. You can have a look and see what it looks like here. Actually really easy to shoot and to edit once you get the hang of it. It looks really complicated and looks like it might take forever, but it's actually really good and really easy. Other 360 cameras can do similar things, so it will we'll have to see how good it turns out on the Max, but I will obviously test it. There's, a, there's this cool mode called Power Pano, which I'm looking at here. It's kind of like one panoramic image shot with a camera. It's 270 degrees. It's almost like taking a panorama, but really, really, really wide one, but you only need to do one shot. You don't need to you know, shoot different ones and stitch them together. So that's really cool, good for photos. Uh, the photo quality looks decent. It seems to be slightly upgraded from the last one, but photos are not really the main reason to buy this camera at all. That seems to be it in terms of the main new features. I mean, there are, are obviously some other things. So for example, voice control, live streaming, it's waterproof, which we've come to expect from GoPros now, but you don't need any extra case, waterproof straight from the go. Um, you only need one SD card, not like two, which you needed with the previous Fusion, again, making it harder to use. So this is a much easier, more user-friendly camera. That's at least what they're trying to make happen, I do believe. So yeah, I guess that's pretty much it. I'm not sure what you think. Let me know in the comments. It's gonna cost $499 in the US and £475 in the UK. Now that is quite expensive. It's one of the more expensive 360 cameras, not gonna lie. More expensive than the Fusion, which has had a big price cut and more expensive by about $100 or maybe a little bit more than the Insta360 ONE X, which is probably gonna be, again, like I said, its main competitor. This camera does bring some new stuff. I think the video quality is probably gonna be slightly better despite the slightly lower resolution just because of how uh, GoPro uses usually superior quality lenses and internal hardware. If the audio is as good as they're saying, then that's going to be a really good reason to buy it because, yeah, I don't like syncing up audio with like a shotgun mic and stuff. It's just going to make it a much more user-friendly camera. And I think at the end of the day, that's what they're trying to make. They're trying to make the most user-friendly 360 camera while still keeping that good quality hardware that GoPro are really famous for. And like I say, available to pre-order now. So if this has convinced you or if you want to see more, check the link below and you'll see more information about it and the pre-order link as well. Yes, that's it. That's the GoPro Max. I'm pretty excited. I will get it on the 25th of October. So on the 27th of October, you can probably expect to see some videos and photos and some, you know, in initial impressions. Then I'll obviously do a big review. And I will do a lot of comparisons with the Insta 360 ONE X because that is probably going to be the one that people are going to be wondering about. Which one shall I get? So I will try and answer that for you. GoPro Hero Max, that's it. Hope you found this useful. I will see you next time. Bye.